it's not easy butchering people. It's hard work. So Mindhunter is based on a book that I am unfortunately familiar with, written by Robert Douglas along with a ghostwriter, or sorry, John Douglas. And John Douglas was an FBI agent who began doing exactly what we see in the show, which is interviewing and talking to these serial killers called sequence killers at the time as they were developing the process of profiling through the FBI that allegedly led to them being able to sit in a room with no other information except for the details of the crime, be able to tell you very specific things about the killer, just purely based on the nature of the murders, and all this came through these interviews with the serial killers. Are criminals born, or are they formed? So just, to, so just to set this scene up, what we're dealing with is the second interview with Ed Kemper, who was the real, the first serial killer that John Douglas uh, interviewed. And what we get to see in this scene, I think the aspect that is interesting to look at it from when we watch through it yeah. is from the perspective of a seduction. And just keep that in mind as we watch it. If you nerd out about true crime, this show pays tribute to all that and hits on all of it. So it's fun for people to interact about. But that subconscious aspect is a huge, huge, huge part of, of this scene as well, which we'll, we'll talk about. Well, let's get into it one more time from the beginning. This is like a big chess game. And everything is set up in a way that we get into that chess made move. So we have an insert shot that turns out to be a boom up to... Holden's face. His and just replaying that op- the first time he entered the prison, handing off the weapons, walking through the yeah. hall, going deep into the belly of the beast. Belly of the beast. We hear lots of noises. People are standing around, talking, chatting. Cops and uh, prisoners are all with each other, which is the contrast mm-hmm. of what's about to happen. And the yeah. other thing that's noteworthy is that about 10 seconds in, we already get into the conversation. And for a long time, we're Mm. still staying on the outside as he's walking up to it, but we're already hearing how that conversation is starting. Here's the thing. I spent five years as a brick agent and a couple of years at the academy. I'm squeaky clean. Which, it's so long here, you really don't know what the actual layout is going to be of that room but you would Mm -hmm. assume that they're going to be sitting facing each other in some form of uh, interrogation room right like the stuff that we're used to and this is not at all what's happening once we cut to it it's a bigger room it's like it feels like a library or something or like a a hangout room that usually is used for all the prisoners but it's locked off there's nobody there it's kind of dark yeah, and it's very casual thing too. And, and we'd seen this room in the previous scene, but yeah. now it's just such a casual vibe of like, hey, we're friendly now. Like my guards drop. He's not being as threatening as he was before, like the previous scene where he just keeps getting closer and closer to killing range on Holden. There's one really cool shot with the the cop and the newspaper in about 42. Yeah. But before we get to that, at 21 seconds, we kind of have like a profile shot of Holden just like really sunk deeply into his seat like he's super casual super comfortable (laughs) and just spilling out his guts and he thinks like this is going to be my strategy how i'm going to like bond Mm -hmm. with this guy build some trust and then get the information that i need that's the starting of the scene like he feels in control so from this point then forward we have a bunch of like long shots from across the room as they're talking wow then I enroll in college, and suddenly I am more in fucking baby. Wow. Everything goes. You take sugar? No. Cool. Milk. Thank you. You got it, man. Suddenly it's disco and poppers and fern bars. I am up to my neck in chicks. Pussy, pussy, pussy. I hear that. And he had 42 seconds. That's where we saw the guy with the newspaper. He mm-hmm. just the whole time he's just reading the newspaper, not really paying attention. He's not even there. We don't see him. And then the the waving of the newspaper, that sound, really suddenly mm-hmm. made me notice. Oh, there's actually a guard here that's supposed to watch over this. Um, well, we see his face too, like he is kind of doing his job. Yeah. And then he just gives up, like this is stupid. If I was the guard, I'd be like all over this conversation. I mean, this doesn't happen every day. <laughs> I'll be listening in. This is kind of interesting. Grass or ass, nobody rides for free. Next thing I know, I'm with a 24 year old that I met in a bar. No woman has ever been so into me in my entire life. Don't brag, it's unbecoming. Oh my God, I am so sorry. I'm kidding. Man. 
This is the first time that we cut to this profile shot. And we should talk about whenever characters move, the camera moves, which there's a great video essay by the nerd writer that talks about David Fincher obsession with camera mm -hmm. movement in sync with the character. This scene yeah. follows that rule. I am so sorry. I'm kidding. Man. The things she comes up with in the sack. You gotta love that. So a camera really only moves with the character here. And now listen at one 13, 14, when he's going to sit down. Yeah. That sound right there, that sounds like a guy that's 250, 300 pounds. And it's really important with the sound to make sure that we understand how much bigger this guy is compared to Holden. Not even him would have a chance. If Ed chose to kill him, he wouldn't have a chance to try and get yeah. out of it. So then for, at 126, we're in a couple of profile shots for a while. And I don't know if I'm fully correct with this but i'm gonna say whenever they kind of disagree with each other when they're saying something that the other person is gonna be um disagreeing with or surprised by we tend to be in these profile shots which isolates the character so you were a virgin up until then that's what you're saying no not at all oh you go over like you're a virgin what what's wrong with that i was a virgin for years oh no there's nothing wrong with it it's just i'm not. Uh -huh. This new girl, she take it up the ass. Here at 157, when he gets up, it's mm -hmm. all about the weight and the size. Camera moves yeah. with him. Nothing but resistance. Sound design. It's really difficult. Moves what over. You, you hear right. the, the shackles there or the handcuffs. He puts the hand in there in the, uh, on his chin in the profile shot the hand is bigger than his throat you feel this you feel it it's all muscle yeah and it's, it's so at 157 he's in his seat at 202 he has his fingers around his throat and could be killing him it happens so fast and it's fun also that shot to follow him in that rising shot because you get to see holden's little head in the foreground yeah. and realize oh there's no escape what's what's going to happen yeah, by the time that Holden starts choking a little, I think that's when the audience realizes, okay, this can go two ways now. It's entirely the opposite. It's nothing but resistance. It's really difficult. Look, well, mommy. You feel this? You feel it. It's all muscle. Cartilaginous. <laughs> and then the little tap at 210 is just... Yeah, the tap is too is good. killer. He's and it's basically amazing telling them, don't worry, I got this, you're in good hands, I'm not going to hurt you for now. It's, and, it's, and it's also saying, yes, I could have killed you. Yes. <laughs> like, just so you know. Totally. I'm going to play at 212. He's sitting back down, listen again to the sound. Skip some of the detail. No, I'm here Ooh, for the detail. That's like the loudest it's been so yeah. far. One other thing I just want to say about that sit down is there's something like you, there's like a good three seconds that we wait after he releases him that we cut to the reverse of Kemper looking out the windows to see that the guards aren't looking. Yeah. Just ensuring like, did I, did I get away with that? Or shit, maybe I should have just done it. Just to finish that thought off, if I just, I froze at 219. And if you look at the composition of that shot and you see the guard in the background just on the far right behind the window that right. has the grid, that's completely designed. That's a composed shot. Oh, yeah. That is telling us nobody's watching him. And throughout yeah. the entire scene, you always have these moments where you see these guards just turned away, not paying attention. Um, yeah, by and there, there's so many opportunities awesome. to show that with a tighter shot too that they don't, which makes it really cool too. The restraint is like impressive. And also go back if you have Netflix and watch the earlier scene and just pay attention to the way the guards are being set up in that because it's really impressive. They're much more breathing down Kemper's throat. Yeah, and I also did a, I did a scene of Mindhunter in the video with Steve Halfish, 10 tips by big film editors and one was about the bystander and there's mm -hmm. a scene in Mindhunter where they totally get one over on a, a sequence killer and um, it's all being like the audience. Oh, is, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. 
is experiencing this through the eyes of the bystander. So they who ends up being in the, you're talking about the guard and he ends up being incredibly important to the plot. Yeah, yeah. of this story later because he leaks some stuff to the press that kind of really throws Holden's life into into flummox. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 345. So let's go to that. Minist- because that's sort of the climax of the scene. This is where we're starting to learn. This is where everything pays off. Well, here's the thing. T- to the moment where he now talks about why he killed. I'm listening. And then everything is moving from this point forward. Do you think these are dolly shots? 356 wants to gotta be yeah to yeah you never know i mean fincher likes a lot of editors especially in television like to so like to do the pan themselves i mean this is a pretty extreme one yeah digital zooms but you can see fincher planning that into the shooting it feels to me like a dolly shot because the background is moving did your mother humiliate you exactly yeah 416 418 very well the designed and here's maintained. where the music becomes Ed. I mean, it started before, but it was kind of just sound. And now it, that is um, kind of like a Hitchcock to me, like a mm-hmm. Bernard Herrmann theme, which is cool. Yeah. Because it, it gives us that nostalgic feeling of these suspense thrillers. Did your mother humiliate you? Eh? I also love that the last shot of him, it is the closest shot, and it's still not a close-up. It's a medium shot. And he turns away from the camera at the end, which sort of releases us from this Mm -hmm. scene. It's like he decides when the scene is over. It's not us. It's It's not Holden. He decides when he's done. This was just a short scene analysis. If you like this, you should really dig into the podcast. There's a link that you can check out, which is thisguyedits.com slash podcast. And it'll take you to all the different ways how you can subscribe to this podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Go on a run, use it in your commute in the morning, and listen to us really nerd out on a scene. And thank you to Kurta for the music. And as Sven always says, happy editing.